Welcome to the Tech Arena, featuring authentic discussions between tech's leading innovators and our host, Allison Klein. Now, let's step into the arena. Welcome to Tech Arena. My name is Allison Klein. Today, I'm joined by Jeff Wittich, Chief Product Officer at Ampere. I'm really excited for the conversation today. Welcome to the program, Jeff. Thanks, Allison. Great to be here. So, Jeff, you're a, a longtime player in the tech industry and, and have a tremendous amount of experience with selling different architectures uh, to large consumers of data center infrastructure. Most recently, you're the Chief Product Officer at Ampere. Why don't you give us a background on Ampere and um, why you decided to set your sights on this new architecture? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Ampere has been around for about five years now, and uh, we really set out to create a processor that was specifically designed to meet the needs of the cloud. A lot of us have been working with cloud customers, with cloud technologies for even the last 10 or 15 years. And it's obvious that a lot of things have changed. The architecture has changed. The software world has completely changed during that time. But what hasn't really changed is the underlying hardware itself, especially the underlying microprocessor that runs the cloud. And so at Ampere, we really set out to correct that. We set out to build something that's new, uh, something that's able to deliver performance in the way that the cloud requires it, that's scalable the way that the cloud requires it, and especially something that's efficient in the ways that the cloud requires it. We've got some great products out there right now that uh, that do a lot of these things, and we're really excited about uh, our future roadmap as well. You know, I think that the news has been filled lately with stories of some of the largest players in cloud adopting the Ampere architecture, and I wanted to ask you a bit about some of the things that you just talked about. What are the determinants that have changed in terms of cloud providers and what they're looking for from an architecture and what's changed in software? Because we've seen other architectures come in and try to do what you are being successful doing. And so there, there's gotta be um, something different afoot. Can you tell us a little bit about the Ampere architecture itself and what do you think are the key characteristics of that architecture? Yeah. You know, so I think one of the most important things uh, strategically with what we're doing is we really took a clean sheet of paper approach and focused on the, the actual problem statement, which was, you know, how could we build a processor that's uniquely designed for cloud infrastructures? You know, and when we think cloud, we're thinking pretty broadly. We're not thinking of some subset of workloads or uh, a, a subset of locations. You know, we're thinking about any place, any workload that runs in a, in a cloud infrastructure, which is you know, over time becoming almost every single workload, uh, almost everything is moving towards this cloud type of environment. And so if we look specifically at what we did, you know, if we take performance, for example, obviously everybody wants high performance processors uh, that uh, deliver the most output across a variety of, of workloads. But there's some nuances to that, right? They want performance that's predictable, performance that's consistent. What's changed with the cloud is that you now have dozens, maybe even hundreds of users and applications running in the exact same physical piece of hardware. And that means that you really do need to re-architect things at the processor level to ensure that you don't have a bunch of unnecessary or undesirable interference between users, uh, where users are kind of stealing their unfair share of resources, which causes a lot of unpredictability, you know, or even that users uh, are starting to infer the contents of other people's uh, private data. So that predictable performance has been one key. Uh, the other is that the way that we're delivering uh, that performance also relies on having a very large number of cores. Now, each of those cores are really high performance, um, but having 128 of them, for instance, means that our customers have the, the scalability they need to provide the capacity uh, to their users. And we make it easy for them to utilize all of those cores, run them at nearly max utilization, and not see some sort of uh, you know, performance cliff where they feel compelled to reduce utilization to achieve max performance. You know, we're able to deliver max performance at max utilization all the time. And then I'll just, I think the third one that's becoming really important, especially over the last 12 months, is just delivering that in a really power efficient envelope. I will say that a couple of years ago, that was perhaps the least important 
of the attributes of our processors for our customers. It was a nice to have, but it wasn't absolutely required. And, and clearly with some of the, the changes that have occurred over the last nine to 12 months, um, you know, scarcity of power in certain places, pushback on further data center sprawl, you know, concern around increasing power consumption, increasing water usage in specific regions, and just how hard it is to build that extra data center or, you know, build the, the extra capacity on the grid to satisfy more data centers has made power efficiency a big part of a lot of our customers' calculations, where if they can deliver you know, two or three times more performance in the same power and data center footprint, that's a big advantage. Uh, and not having to build that extra yeah, second or third data center matters. I think we can all feel that viscerally with what's happening with energy prices. And when you extrapolate that to large scale data center sizes, you really get the the impact of being able to deliver more power efficiency. Why is the Ampere architecture such a star when it comes to performance efficiency in the data center? Yeah, yeah I think it's a, it's a couple things. Um, and a lot of it, it's, it always comes back to that, that focus on the cloud use case. Uh, and, and making sure that we remain very focused about what we're delivering. Uh, and, and what that means quite simply, you know, when it comes to our processors is, you know, we have built uh, our processors, the cores that are in our products, starting at Ampere One and beyond. You know, we built them with this extreme focus on ensuring that everything we do that delivers more performance needs to do so uh, without consuming incrementally more power than the performance gains that we get. And that might sound uh, really simple. Uh, it's not. If you focus on too many different use cases, it can be really tempting to continue to add accelerators that do this or do that, features that do something for one very specific use case, but don't actually benefit all those other use cases. And we can just eliminate all those things and focus entirely on things that deliver extraordinarily efficient performance for cloud use cases. Another thing is that you know, it's not only that a lot of other processors weren't designed with cloud use cases in mind, a lot of times those cores weren't even designed with data center use cases in mind. And so a lot of those cores are actually used in client products, which have power efficiency requirements as well, but those power efficiency characteristics are very different. Those requirements are different than the efficiency requirements in a data center. You know, in a laptop, you are expected to have big, you know, big idle periods. You want to just sip power during those extended idle periods. You want to be able to turn things on and off on demand, uh, but you're okay with burning a lot of power in a short amount of time if it means that your latency decreases and you can get a job done faster and then go back to sleep again. And that's just not the case in a data center. In a data center, you're expecting to have you know, high utilization all the time, and that's the operating region to be really efficient because actually efficiency improves as utilization. When you think about the process that you've gone through over the last five years in developing an architecture and then working with um, some cloud service providers as some of your initial customers to seek their commitment to deploy, tell me a little bit about what that collaboration is like and how much the customer is influencing the design of where you take your architecture. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've been working really closely with uh, with a number of the biggest hyperscalers in the world now for for a number of years, and, and that's been really important. I think we had a we had a pretty solid idea of what was needed when we came in, and a, a lot of that came from the fact that we have a team that has spent, in many cases, over a decade working in uh, in the cloud industry and, and knows what some of the fundamental challenges are. But of course, we've learned more about the nuances, the implementation details, uh, some of the specific operational details, you know, by working really closely with, uh, with these big cloud providers. And that's really why we focused out of the gate at, at going after the big hyperscalers and, and trying to win uh, at the big hyperscalers. They're the hardest customers to win, but they also give you the most feedback and are the most demanding customers. So if we can meet their requirements, then we surely can meet the requirements of other cloud operators, cloud providers around the world. So uh, having those years of, of input from, from the hyperscalers has been, has been really valuable to us, not just in the current products, uh, but also in our future ones. And that's also one of the key differences with how we're developing our products is we have a really fast cadence and we're using a lot of agile techniques, ones that really come more out of the software world than out of the hardware world. So we can iterate really fast. We do a lot of work in pre-silicon before we ever get hardware back because 
actually getting hardware is the slowest part of the process. And because of that, we have tons of iterations on our products before we even have them physically back. And because of that, we can incorporate a lot of customer feedback uh, very rapidly. We don't have to wait three, four, five years for some future product to include a new customer request. We can actually do that in 12 months, 18 months. That's impressive. When you think about all cloud architectures and, and everywhere that cloud is deployed, that puts you squarely into the space of targeting enterprise as well. Mm -hmm. How has the conversations with enterprise gone and are they as ambitious about trying new architectures as some of the service providers? Yeah. Like you mentioned, yeah, and enterprise uh, is definitely a key part of our strategy. You know, as we started out, it was about getting the, the big hyperscale providers, the big infrastructure as a service players. And, and then we started to uh, get a lot of wins with uh, some of the, the other service providers, the digital service providers, social media companies, things like that. And especially over the last six months, since, uh, since HPE has come out with uh, the ProLiant RL300 servers that are based on, on Ampere, we've had increasing interest from the enterprise private cloud, which is a key part of our overall you know, full cloud strategy. It's all about public cloud and private cloud uh, and all of the hybrid models uh, connecting those up together. So I would say that um, we've seen increasing interest over the last six months, especially in things like the financial sector, you know, healthcare, uh, a lot of the industries that are incredibly dependent on compute uh, for their fundamental capabilities. And I would say that the, the push for sustainability and the need for power efficiency has been a key reason that uh, that, that conversation has sped up quite a lot, mm -hmm. is, is the fact that you know they clearly don't see building out additional data centers or finding additional um, data center space and capacity somewhere else as an option, and, and their needs aren't slowing down. So I would say that um, we're going to see a lot of enterprises uh, adopting you know, Ampere processors as they you know continue to build out their private clouds. And I'm really, really excited about where we're going with that. That's fantastic. I can't wait to hear more. You mentioned future products. So obviously I've got to ask the question of what we can expect from Ampere headed into 2023. We've got some headwinds with macroeconomic forces. It sounds like you almost have the, a perfect product though for challenging times. And so I'd love to hear what you've, what you've got in store for us in the next year. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, um, you know, there, there, there are headwinds definitely, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the macro view of the world. Uh, but, you know, these types of uh, periods are typically where, you know, technology transitions occur. People have every reason to go and look for uh, a new way of, of deploying compute, a more efficient way of deploying compute. It actually helps to solve perhaps some of the, the business problems that they have. Uh, maybe they have shrinking budgets. They can do more uh, with uh, their existing footprint with our processors, or, or maybe they, they need to reduce their uh, power consumption, uh, reduce the power bill, you know, our processors will do a great job with that. So I'm, I'm really excited about this because this could be, you know, the catalyst for that change that needs to occur. Um, and I think as we go into the next year, uh, we already kind of hit on the fact that I think we'll see a lot more enterprise adoption. Most of what we've seen to date from us has been around public clouds. Uh, but I think you'll start to see more and more private and hybrid cloud uh, use cases uh, come out. The second one is, I think you're gonna see a lot more at the edge. So we have a couple of really interesting edge wins. Uh, Cruise, for instance, is one who uh, is using us for their robo taxis. For them, you know, that's just a really high performance edge server uh, that runs cloud workloads. And so if we can succeed in that type of uh, high performance use case, you know, there's a, a multitude of other edge use cases that need high performance, but have constrained environments that will do very, very well in. So I think you're going to hear, see some really, really interesting edge use cases. Uh, and then the third thing is, you know, we've had great success with our, our Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max processors. And shortly you will see more from us on our Ampere One processors, uh, which use our own Ampere custom core. Uh, they'll go out to some much larger core counts than what we have right now. And uh, they'll continue to deliver you know, more and more performance efficiency and, and some cool cloud features as well. So I'm really excited about uh, getting those out in the market and being able to talk more about Ampere One. 
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being on the program today, Jeff. I've just got one more question for you. Where can folks find out more about all of those cool products that you just named off? I'm really excited to see more about the Ampere Ones. That sounds really interesting, but the entire lineup sounds great. Where can folks find out and engage with the Ampere team? Yeah, the best place to go would be our website. If you go to amperecomputing.com, you can find uh, a lot of information on everything from the products, technical details uh, within that, uh, around the products, solutions that people are building out around our products, uh, software, performance data is all on there. So uh, go to the website. And if you don't see everything you're looking for, there's tons of contact information on there and you can reach out to us. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any other questions that you have. Thanks so much for being on the show today, Jeff. It was a great time. Thanks, Allison. Thanks for joining The Tech Arena. Subscribe and engage at our website, thetecharena.net. All content is copyrighted by The Tech Arena. 